Good evening and welcome to our time of compliment once again. Uh, I've taken the theme tonight for the love of God and I hope it will become clear to you when we do the readings and afterwards in the reflection that I bring on the readings. Uh, to start with, as usual, two sentences from scripture. The first is from Psalm 5 and the verse says, The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And from John chapter 3, verse 17, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. So let's take a moment before we say together that prayer that Jesus taught us and his disciples to say. Let's say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our two readings then tonight. The first one is from the book of Psalms, and it is Psalm number 5, which I took that short passage from the start. And it's one of the early psalms of David, and uh, as we know that these psalms, particularly in the first part, which are attributed to David, were meant to be prayers. This one is quite a good one for a prayer. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sign. Listen to my cry for help. My King and my God, for you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will lay my request before you and wait in expectation. You are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you, the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men, the Lord abhors. But I, by your great mercy, will come into your house in reverence. Will I, be, will I bow down toward your holy temple? Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of my enemies make straight your way before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. On their tongue they speak deceit. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their int intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favour, as they are with a shield. And the second reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 3, beginning to read at the 12th verse. I have spoken to you on earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak to you on heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. 
This is the verdict. The light has come into the world, but men love the darkness instead of the light, because of their deeds of evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light, for fear of their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, and that it may be seen plainly that those who have done this have been through God. For the words of the God in Scripture, thanks be to God. <clears throat> For those of you who know your music, there's a bit there that is quite familiar, and it's almost impossible as a, co form, as a chorister to not be trying to sing it when you say it. And the, the bit I'm talking about is that that Jesus, that man lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so that the Son of Man might be lifted up and that everyone dwells in him may have eternal life. And then the chorus comes in that God so loved the world. God did so love this world. <clears throat> so let us pray when we come to reflect on these two readings. Lord, may the words that I speak be in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. On the initial reading of Psalm 5, it appears to me that there is, a, it raises a question. Who may enter the Lord's holy temple? However, there's perhaps another issue here that we need to consider when we hear this psalm. We've all heard the saying of what comes first, the chicken or the egg. But here, the psalmist, David, seems to pose us with another dilemma. Which comes first, mercy or justice? Yet this must have been a dilemma facing God's prophets called to speak. Because they were called to speak his word to the people. Remember, the people didn't read, couldn't read and write. So it was the prophets who portrayed the word of God to them. Of course, they had to debate it. And what would their course of action would be if someone was found guilty of something? For that individual to face justice or to be shown mercy. <coughs> Excuse me. John 3 tells us, John 3.17 tells us, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And if we look at the heart of this psalm, we find that he too speaks this great love of God. Throughout the psalm we see the contrast between those who are righteous and those who are wicked, along with the issues of who may or may not enter the Lord's temple. And there are many things we could consider here. However, it would seem that the overall th aim sought by David is not protection or who is in or who is not in, but the temple joy. And perhaps verse 11 is the one verse that stands out in this respect. The loving kindness of God towards his people, towards us today, is wholly undeserved. <clears throat> if Israel and us today were to receive the poor judgment due to us, the proper judgment due to us for our stubborn resistance to God and God's will, will then be there with no option but to condemn us without hope. But God's love for us all is one love that will not let go. We may be unfaithful, we may be wandering from the path, but God remains faithful and welcoming, and in that we can rejoice and be glad. David fully understood God. He understood that God does not look on at our outward appearance, but looks upon our hearts. He knows when we are sincere and when we are not. Every morning David would find himself too busy not to spend time with God. Do we look to God in the morning? Or are we likely more like me? Are you more like me, too busy to spend time for a moment's thought of what God might be thinking before we start our day? I feel that too often, as Christians, we tend to worship God from afar instead of developing a closer relationship with him. 
The problem, I think, is in our lives are so busy, so wrapped up in our own self-importance. Even in these times of COVID, we let our busyness get in the way. And yet, what is there in our lives more important than God? Nothing. We may not think of ourselves as being wicked, but the reality is that we think what we think and say and the things we do that we know that are wrong, even if we do them unintentionally. I believe that God does not take pleasure in our wrongdoing. So are we worthy to come before the Lord? The answer to that at the moment, I think, is no, but not on our own. But then we remember the words spoken in John's Gospel, and we know that through Jesus Christ, God came to reconcile himself to us. He looks on us not as we are, but as we have found through Jesus Christ, the Saviour. So we can indeed be glad, and we can ever sing for joy when we are in the presence of the Lord. But remember to give God time. God doesn't answer straight away. He's not on a speed dial. He will take time. But if you ask, he will respond. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your love, for the grace and mercy, and we ask that you will help us to show these same characteristics in our daily lives. Help us to show that same love and forgiveness to others that you have shown to us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, let us be honour, glory and honour to your name. Amen. So, as we come to a time of prayer, let us remember for a moment, those people who have gone before us, remember what we've done during the day, and let us lay our lives before God. To the bidding, within our darkest night, the response is, let your light shine. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. Lord, thank you for all you do in our lives. We are truly grateful for all that you have promised us, from our friends to our families. You are always blessing us in many, in many ways we cannot imagine or completely understand. But we feel blessed. Today we lift up to you our church family. We remember the life of Jim Pierman, dedicated to his church. And we remember Barbara and the family at this time. We lift up to you, Lord, the clergy of our team, to Bridget and Nigel and Simon. May they continue to show us the way, the true way of living with you. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. Lord, we share the pain and anguish of those who have had to flee from their homes, their countries and their livelihoods, who risk their lives this desperate to seek a new start in life, free to start free from fear of war. May they see your light, feel your strength and power, and know the truth of your promise that they will not be forgotten. We remember tonight all those who are, fight, who are desperate to find relatives and friends who may still be alive in the Turkish earthquake. But we think of those who have lost their lives and their families and their livelihoods. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. Lord, we bring before you tonight all members of the emergency services, the fire, police and ambulance. But we particularly pray for all members of the National Health Service as they continue to fight the battle against the virus. May they know that you are walking along with them. You are there holding their hand while they hold others. You are there caring with them. You are there feeling their pain, their tension and their stress 
and may know the love of your Lord Jesus is with them always. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. So drawing all these prayers together, we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining with us tonight with me tonight. It seems strange. Uh, I was talking in conversation with someone today and we were thinking, where were we back in March when we went into lockdown? But there we are, and here we are, in November, still in the same situation. And now we've been faced with, come Thursday, an even bigger and longer time. I pray that you keep safe. I pray that you take care of yourselves. And may God bless you. I look forward to being with you again. So a final blessing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace this night and evermore. Amen.